Now in this example, what we've got to do is prove that the cotangent or cot of a plus b is identical to cot a cot b minus 1, all divided by cot a plus cot b. So to do this, we'll just put down proof. What side would I take? Well, I actually think the left-hand side is at the easiest to take for this example. So we're going to start then with the cot of a plus b. Now, what is cotangent or cot for short? Well, it's 1 over the tan of a plus b. But I don't really want to write this as 1 over the tan of a plus b. I want to write this as cosine over sine. Cosine of a plus b all divided by the sine of a plus b. Because I feel that this is going to be easier. We'll expand both of these these uh, expressions here. We'll get expressions in the form of cosines and sines, but then when I look at this, I know that cot is the same as cos a over sine a. So I feel then that this is going to take us into this, all right? So let's just expand cos of a plus b in the usual way. Using the identity for that, you're going to have cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And this is all divided by, and the expansion of sine of a plus b is the sine of a cos b plus the sine of b cos a, or cos a sine b. Now, where's this going to take us to? Well, can you see that we've got essentially the same structure as the top? We've got two terms on the top two terms on the bottom. Same as what we've got here. One term, two terms on the top, two terms on the bottom. And if you do enough of these, you'll see that to get that one there gives me a clue. To get a one in that position, this position here, would mean that I would have to divide this term by sine a sine b. But I can't do that just on this term. I've got to do it on every term to keep the balance of the fraction. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both top and bottom by sine a sine b. It's going to look quite involved at this next level, but just hang on in, okay? So if we divide this term, cos a cos b, by sine a sine b, then we go on to the next term, sine a sine b, divide that by sine a sine b. Do the same for the two terms on the bottom of the fraction. So this term, sine a cos b, sine a cos b, divide that by sine a sine b. Alright, and we've got plus, and we've got this term, sine b cos a, and we divide that again by sine a sine b. So quite a lot of work there. But it really does simplify things. Because if we start with this term here, we've got cos a over sine a. Cos a over sine a, we know, is cot a. Cos b over sine b, cot b. And when it comes to this term, we can cancel out both the top and the bottom by sine a sine b and get 1 over 1, which is 1. So we have minus, that's that minus there, 1, all divided by, and we should now find that we get the bottom. Because on the bottom here we have sine a and sine a, common factors, they cancel, and we get cos b over sine b, which is cot b. And for this term here, we have a common factor of sine b, so it can cancel out, and we end up with cos a over sine a, which is cot a. So we have plus cot a. Okay, this is basically this, only the two terms at the bottom are round the wrong way. I'd always suggest, though, that you do finish 
making it look exactly the same as the thing you had to prove. So don't get lazy, turn those round and then you've got cot A plus cot B. And there you have it.